From the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, go down to verse 27. This is the King James. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest thou, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Relief for your restlessness and comfort for your crisis. Relief for your restlessness and comfort for your crisis. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us and through us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. After being with you for 25 years, you might well know that this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. In fact, the book of Isaiah is one of my favorite books in the Old Testament. The other one being the weeping prophet Jeremiah. Yeah. If you do a study of the book, you will discover that the name Isaiah means salvation of God. In fact, Isaiah's name is an excellent summary of the contents of his book. The word salvation appears 26 times in Isaiah compared to only seven times in all the other prophetic books combined. So I think it's safe to say that the theme and the purpose of the book of Isaiah is found in his name. Salvation is the Lord's. The book of Isaiah is like a miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters are like the 39 chapters of the Old Testament. Yeah. which stresses the righteousness, holiness, and justice of God. Each one of those chapters is filled with God's judgment upon an immoral and idolatrous people. So the first 39 chapter also portrayed humanity's greatest need for salvation. As Isaiah declared that God is the supreme ruler, the sovereign Lord of history, and the only Savior. Yes. In the first 39 chapters of this book, Isaiah solemnly warns Judah of approaching judgment because of their moral depravity, political corruption, social injustice, yes. and especially their spiritual idolatry. Yes. So my question for you this morning, does this sound like the world we live in today? Yes. I, I think that this message preached in 740 BC is still relevant in 2019 AD. Yeah. We are called to learn, brothers and sisters, from the lessons of old, because God cannot and will not allow such blatant sin to go unpunished forever. Amen. Now, I didn't come here this morning to preach a message of doom, but a message of hope, yeah. Yeah. because there is hope this morning found in our text. For some who might be feeling a little discouraged, for some who might be feeling somewhat broken, for some who are disappointed in life or with themselves, there is hope. This week, read the book of Isaiah, and you will discover that the first, I'm sorry, that the final 27 chapters are like the 27 books of the New Testament, right. which declares a message of God's glory compassion and undeserved favor. So, so let us consider uh, Isaiah 40 verses 27 through 20, 31. We see Isaiah prophesying about the events that will occur after Judah's 70 year captivity in Babylon. 
Yeah. You see, the children of Israel are pretty down in the dumps about now. So much so that they have lost their hope. And keep in mind that the first 39 chapters dealt with Judah's approaching judgment. Can you imagine? Every time the preacher stands up, he has nothing but something negative to say. I can imagine the children of Israel saying every time they saw him coming, Oh Lord, here he comes. Or as a friend of mine, who has a, a, a son who's a little uh, mentally challenged, says, There you go. There you go. What does he have to say to us now? Can somebody please shut this man up? Every week he's preaching destruction this and destruction that. Stop doing this and start doing that. Forget about throwing tomatoes at him. Somebody please give me a rock. Not uh, with myself. The same old song played day in and day out, always condemning, preaching doom, pointing out sin and sending everybody to hell. If he comes over here, I'm going to hit him in the head. Well. However, the last 27 chapters, uh, the message brings a new word from the Lord. Isaiah didn't have to fear for his life this time because it's a different message for the people of this time. It is a message of comfort. The chapter begins by saying, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Say to your God, speak ye, comfort me to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Note that the prophecy of comfort is a hundred years prior to their actual captivity. So let's do the math. You see, we have a hundred year prophecy of future comfort, plus 70 years of captivity in Babylon. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we have to wait 170 years for the prophecy to come to pass? Well, somebody please give me a rock for this man. <laughs> you better hold me because when I get through with him, the word of God, I'm going to be no place left for him or fit for him but the cemetery. It's no wonder why Israel was down in the dumps. They will not see the fruit of their comfort for a hundred and seventy years. That's enough to make anybody depressed. Isaiah then goes on to remind them of who God is and encourages them that he and he alone is able to see them through. Verse 21, uh, verse 21 says, Have you not heard? And have you not known? Yeah. Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the world? Here we see four rhetorical questions. The first one being, have you not known? The tense of each of these questions are answered in the affirmative yes. You see, the Greek word for know is yada which means to proceed, to understand, to acquire knowledge, to know, or to discern. In other words, if I were to translate it, uh, the scripture is saying, what is it going to take to get through to you? When are you going to understand what I, who I am? Have you known from the beginning? Isaiah is saying, why are you so sad? Don't you know who God is? God is bigger than your circumstance. Oh, yeah. You see, the first 39 chapters, Isaiah had to preach about judgment. He knows that the message wasn't popular. It was, it was tight, but it was right. Uh -huh. He declared, you brought that judgment on yourself. But God loves you enough to bring you out of your situation. He loves you enough to bring you out of your captivity. So don't tell me you did not. Because he brought you through many dangers, seen and unseen. In the midst of your rebellion and sin and shame, he was right there with you. Didn't you know it? And maybe some of them still don't know. Maybe some of them still don't understand that 
this God that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Maybe they didn't understand that this same God that said, let there be light, this God can and will comfort their crying hearts during adversity. Don't you know that, brothers and sisters? Well, Don't you today? Everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, 
faileth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Listen, I'm a firm believer that the reason why many of us today don't have joy, the reason why many of us cannot enjoy God's comfort while we're going through life's complexities is because many of us don't know who God is. You see, you can't have joy unless you know who, who gives the joy. Huh? Now, you can have a life full of luxuries. You may not work for anything. You may even be happy. But unless you know who God really is, Just he's true and faithful and 
and good and merciful. He's gracious and loving and he's spirit. In fact, he's three persons in one. That blows your mind. We really, really never come to terms with that. We really, really never understand that. But God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is God all by himself. That means that when I need a father, he's right there. So whatever your situation 
situation is, whether it be extreme or mild, God is in control.
is the source of our provision. God is the source of our power. And God is the source of everything we need. We can't do anything within ourselves. That's the problem. Too many of us think we got an annual on life. But the minute you think you got an annual on life, I got news for you. Life is happening to you.
requires that we believe in the impossible, look for the unseen answer, hope in times of hopelessness, and know without knowing why or how that God will take care of you. Yes. So my question this morning is, are you waiting on God to see you through? Where is your faith? Are you willing to put your trust in Him? What do you turn to when, you go, when the going gets tough? Do you turn to the Bible or do you turn to Jesus? Do you turn to women or are you turning to a man? Are you truly trusting and waiting and depending on the Lord to see you through? Brothers and sisters, don't allow pride to be your downfall. Proverbs said pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. But they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll burn and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Many of you have seen the picture of a, of a huge eagle's nest high in the branches of a tree, sitting on the crag of a cliff. You see, when the uh, mother eagle builds a nest, she starts with thorns, broken branches, yeah. sharp rocks, and another other items that seem entirely unsuitable for the project. But then she lines the nest with a thick padding of wool, feathers and furs from the animals she has killed, making it soft and comfortable for the eggs. By the time the growing bird reaches a flying age, yeah. the comfort of the nest and the luxury of free meals make them quite reluctant to leave. Uh -huh. That's when the mother begins to stir the nest yeah. Yeah. with her strong talons, and she begins to pull up the thick carpet of fur and feathers, bringing up the sharp rocks and branches to yeah. the surface. And the more of the bedding gets plucked up, the nest becomes more uncomfortable for the young eagle, to the point where the eagle will climb on his mother's back, and the mother takes off and flies high into the sky until she reaches about 5,000 feet above the ground. And suddenly, yeah. the mother will tip her eagle off and it goes hurling down. It flaps its wings, but nothing happens. And the earth gets closer and closer. And just when the eagle land is about to be splattered all over the ground, the mother swoops down yeah. and catches the eagle. And the process is repeated again and again until that eagle let can fly. The fearful plunging sensation and the feeling of abandonment is part of flying. Brothers and sisters, some of you may be hurting right now, but I came to tell you that there's some relief for your restlessness. There's some comfort for your crisis. So don't try to drown your worries or your anxieties or your fears in a Bible. Just cast all your cares on the Lord and he will see you through. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I want to tell you this morning that God is bigger than your doubts. He's bigger than your fears. He's bigger than your circumstances. Notice, God didn't excuse Israel from punishment. They still had to go into captivity. But even in the midst of their trouble, God still protected them and blessed them and brought them out just as he promised. Somebody here this morning needs to know that. No matter what you're going through, as long as God is on your side, as long as God is on your side, as long as God is on your side, as as on your side yeah. you are the majority and not the minority. Yeah. John said, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Got problems on your job? I got a word of comfort. 
given to Jesus. Yeah. Somebody made me between jobs. I got a word for you. I was young, now I'm old. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor have seen begging brave. Don't you know? God will take care of you. If you feel your enemies are camped around you. The psalmist said, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Hope for your hurting brothers and sisters. Help for your helplessness. If you are down, God wants to lift you up. If you're struggling, he'll give you strength. He wants to replace your faint heart with the faith of his assurance and power. If you're facing trials and tests right now, lift your head up. Look to Jesus because he is the victory. Don't allow Satan to destroy your joy. You see, Jesus paid the price that he might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Listen, don't listen to the voice of Satan. He's going to tell you, you can't make it. You can't do it. God is not here. God doesn't care. But listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And listen to the Word of God. And lift up your head for your redemption is closer than you think. Amen. There is comfort this morning. Comfort in knowing that one of these old days, I'll not have to pull up a heartache and pain. As a little boy, I remember singing the song, Soon I Will Be Done. With the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, troubles of the world, soon I will be done with the troubles of the world going home to live with God. But I like the chorus best because it said, No more weeping and wailing, no more weeping and wailing, no more weeping and wailing, I'm going home. To live with God. Then the Lord said, I want to meet my mother. Yeah. I want to meet my mother. I want to meet my mother. I'm going home to live with God. And then the last thing he says, I want to meet my Jesus. Yeah. I want to meet my Jesus. I've been talking about him a lot. I want to meet my Jesus. I'm going home to live with God. There's comfort this morning. Because one of these old days, God is going to wipe all tears from our eyes. I'm looking forward to that day. I've been down here preaching and talking about Jesus for a long time now. I've been telling folks all about who he is and what he does. But one day, I want to see him face to face. I want to see him for himself. And that's the good news is, I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. He's already promised yeah. that there's a home waiting for me yeah. in his kingdom. That my eyes shall behold him and not another. I'm looking forward to that day. But in the meantime, as I make this journey in this world, I am confident that God Waiting, hoping that my change will come. I'm waiting, 
until. That means I know it's coming. I just got to wait. I know it's coming. But I just got to wait. With the fire things, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting for you, Lord. Let's sing it and mean it. Knowing that day that we are the Lord. Yeah.